When you arrive in England, there should be a bus or train line you can catch from the airport to your hotel. Getting from one side of London to the other should cost you no more than your entire life savings and firstborn child. If possible, try not to eat the food. If you really must, then your safest bet is battered swan, chicken pyramid, or tea pie, which is a pie with tea in it. English people split off from their human ancestors around a million years ago, evolving into Homo sinicus. The English brain is divided into two hemispheres, the left, which produces feelings of shame and self-loathing, and the right, which produces feelings of shame and self-loathing. Please be aware that there are a number of differences between International English and British English. A chip is called a crisp, a trunk is called a boot, and buying over £50 worth of shopping just to mask the fact that all you went into the shop for is condoms is called perfectly normal behaviour. Try not to say anything directly to an English person, but imply it instead. For example, whereas someone outside of England might remark, this literally tastes like excrement, in England we would usually say, that was delicious, compliments to the chef, then return to the restaurant several days later and burn it down without warning. Also, if you must express romantic feelings, please do it either by text message or smoke signals, as affection was made illegal in 1893, and frankly we were all quite glad about that. English families are among some of the most sophisticated in the world. At the age of 18, the oldest male child of the family is expected to fight his father to the death to gain control of the household. It is permitted to use siblings and family pets as weaponry. If there's one thing we do well, it's the naming of our towns and cities, and upon visiting England, you would be silly to miss such idyllic spots as Grimsby, Skegness, and Little Arsington. English people socialise in a number of creative ways. Mondays through Thursdays we usually joust on horses or British jumbo cats. Fridays we drink port and look very intensely at pictures of award-winning film and theatre actress Rachel Weisz. Saturday is for publicly executing people who don't say thank you when you hold a door open for them. And Sunday is for walking our dogs. Or looking at more pictures of award-winning film and theatre actress Rachel Weisz. If an English person appears upset, it's very important you insist they talk about their emotions. There is nothing we love more than our deepest insecurities being forced out of us and made public. If at a party, try to force an English person into publicly speaking, or make them the centre of attention somehow. Guarantee they will pay you back in years to come with a gentle smile, or a Molotov cocktail through your window at 3 in the morning. Sexual etiquette can sometimes be confusing to foreigners, but the process is rather simple. Step 1, if you find someone attractive, it's very important you completely ignore or insult them. Step 2, both parties will then drink at least 3 bottles of wine each, and the act of mating can commence. Keep in mind, however, that the act of mating is only permitted once a year on the 6th of February, also known as Legover Day. This is not to be confused with St. Fapius Day, which is quite a different event indeed. The act should be performed in absolute darkness, and in extreme cases can last upwards of two and a half minutes. At no point should there be eye contact or enjoyment, or the police may be summoned to the premises. Once the act is concluded, both parties should then marry and move into a shared castle. Though given the recent state of the economy, a potting shed is also acceptable. The national dish of England is called beer. Many people believe the majority of us spend our time eating cucumber sandwiches and discussing literature. While this is true, we've recently invented a number of other delightful pastimes, such as football hooliganism, knife crime, and the British spider fighting championships. The national sport of England is called football. Now, a lot of non-Europeans seem confused about the rules, so let's just clear this up, shall we? There are 22 men. Now, whoever gets the most goals wins, but if the chaser gets the snitch, then that's game over. Two goals is called an Earl Grey, three is a John Thomas, and Iceland can suck a fat one. England retained complete sovereignty throughout the years, and was at no point invaded and conquered repeatedly by the Romans, Vikings, Scottish, or French. It is a little known fact that the English actually invented a number of popular items today, including the toothbrush, the jet engine, and the gallbladder. Modern England was born in 1508, when John of Fuzzwuzzles defeated the Earl of Throbwobbles, and decreed that from then on, math would be spelt with an S, everyone would drive on the left, and if someone buys you around at the pub, it's not a gift, you're expected to do the same for everyone at some point, or you're being what we call in England, a right dick. It rains a lot, but the people are alright. I don't even live there anymore. Goodbye.